In today's video, my friend and I spent 24 hours making a Roblox game, and we're going to publish it to see if we can make it to the front page. Throughout the course of the challenge, we really turned the game into a high quality experience for the players. Also, I'm going to be giving out the file of the game for anybody that wants to become a Roblox dev, but doesn't have the time to make everything from scratch. So be sure to check the description if you're interested in downloading a copy of the game. Alright, we only have 24 hours to make this game, so I'm going to be picking a pretty simple game concept. Also, since we're going to be giving out the game file, I want to pick a game style that's pretty common in the Roblox community. Considering this, I instantly knew what game we would be making. Alright, so we've got Roblox Studio open, and yes, I'm aware that I still have not activated Windows. If I get any more comments about it, I think I'm actually going to lose it. I always love the feeling of opening a fresh new project, except for the fact that the lighting sucks. Luckily, I have some amazing lighting settings that I came up by myself and definitely didn't just copy from my pet modeler Cure's settings. Thanks Cure. What better way to start a map than with a 200 by 200 green plate for the ground? The first step to making a pro map is defining the POIs or point of interests. A point of interest is a specific point location or useful site defined mainly by its geographical coordinates, longitude, and latitude. It refers to a place or destination of potential interest. Or in Roblox terms, a spot on the map where the player does something. I know, rocket science. In this map, some of the main POIs will be the eggs to hatch pets, portals that unlock new worlds, and the leaderboards. For now, we're just gonna mark the POIs with these blue parts. With the POIs in place, I started a basic layout for the paths of the map. I made a nice circle in the center just like every other map on Roblox, and I then used a plugin called Launch Archidemies to make a bunch of paths that branch out to the different points of interest. To make the layout look a bit better, I replaced the blue parts with some gray platforms. I think this is a pretty good start to the map. We haven't had any major setbacks yet where we had to redo everything. That was foreshadowing. Next I hopped into Blender and cooked up a nice border model for us. To bring the model into Roblox Studio, I exported it as an FBX and opened up the Asset Manager to import the file. I just gave it random colors for now since we'll be worrying more about the details later on in the project. Next up I copy and pasted it around the map like 50 times for this nice border around the map. Now that we have the border parts in place, we need to make small adjustments to the positions of the POIs just to better fit the map. I'm also making the path a bit darker because I didn't like how bright it was. Now our map is ready to be filled up with a bunch of random assets. Alright, so I've imported a bunch of assets from my Pet Islands game that I've been working on. Just a quick update on that game, the map is starting to look insane. I'm so hyped to get that game out for you guys. Right now I'm thinking that the game will be ready around Christmas time. Time, but I can't really make a promise yet because we still have a lot to get done with that game. Anyways, let's go ahead and spam these assets around the map. We're really making good progress and we're only 30 minutes into this challenge. I feel like the map is looking a little too green right now, so I think a small pond would really fit well into this corner of the map. It was kind of a mess to make, but it was definitely worth it. I think this makes the map look much more complete. We're probably going to want some sort of fountain in the center, so I'm just going to place a part there for now. Alright, I think we're done placing assets around the map for now. It looks full enough to me. Now with the assets out of the way, let me show you one of my biggest tips that I've learned from building. If you're making a map similar to this, I suggest highlighting all of your border parts, duplicating them, and scaling them up. The second layer of border parts is such an easy addition, and it makes such a big difference in the overall feel of the map. I'm not sure that I really am a fan of the border parts though, so I'm going to replace them with some other border models from an old project. I think the new border parts really make the map look a lot cleaner, but let me know what you guys think. Let's go ahead and select all of these old border parts and say goodbye to them. Now we can do the same thing with these new border parts and duplicate them for a second layer. Alright, so Qubit has prepared us portals, eggs, a pet index, and a leaderboard for us to put into the map. We decided to use a lot of the stuff from Shop Be Happy because I want to show that these assets are not rushed and are all able to work together to make a high quality game. The portals actually fit perfectly right where I intended to place them. For some reason the building tools plugin was being weird whenever I tried moving the pet index around. Why do you think the model is way up there? It's clearly right in front of me. The eggs were also pretty large, so I had to scale them down a little. And finally, the leaderboard was a nice fit into its own little area. Qubit also has a free model water fountain that we can just use as a placeholder for now. Alright, so we're a few hours into the project now, and we've already made huge progress on the game. But I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really that happy with how the map looks right now. Everything just feels so random, crammed, and messy. I thought maybe it was because the paths were small, so I tried making them a bit larger, but that still didn't really help much. I also tried going for a simpler style with straight paths, since it seems to be trending right now in these newer Roblox simulators. I think I'm gonna redo most 
most of the map and just use straight paths because I can't handle how messy this map feels. It honestly didn't take that long to adjust everything. I just branched out some straight paths from the center circle and moved the points of interest to the paths. I also had to move the pond over a little bit, but it wasn't too much of an inconvenience. Alright, so I deleted a bunch of the trees because I think that was another factor that made the map feel crowded, and I think I'm going to be keeping the amount of assets lower to help keep that cleaner feel to the map. Now to add some additional detail to the map, we gotta add a texture to the grass. To do this correctly, you need to select all of the grass parts and group it into a union model. After making it a union, the texture goes clean along the entire model instead of overlapping on the different parts. I did the same thing with the path and added a subtle rock texture to it. Finally, I added some stone textures to the base parts of the points of interest. I honestly didn't give that much attention to textures until recently, and I've noticed that it makes such a big difference in your map and it makes it feel more complete. Alright, now I'm pretty happy with how the map is looking. While Cubic continued to work on the clicking system, I decided to take a break from the map and start designing a potential icon for the game. And of course, we're going to be using Photopea for this. I started off by putting a giant cursor in the middle of the icon and tried to copy the style of the mouse icon from Rose Vector Pack, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I also added a red banner on the top right to match all the other game icons, and I used a blurred image of the map for the background since I wasn't sure what else to put in the background. And that's it for the game icon. Alright, let's check out what Qubit's been up to. We're about 10 hours into the challenge now, and we have all of the foundations for the game complete. Okay, so Qubit made this cool clicking animation, but I'm not too sure that I like how it looks in addition to the other animation that's happening with the cursors going towards the stats on the left side. Let's test what else he's done before giving any feedback though. So we also have this free auto clicker which seems to be working just fine, and there's a super click button that recharges every 5 seconds or so, which also seems to be working fine. We're using the egg system from Shop the Happy, so I know that everything with the egg should be working fine. We also have a cheap Robux egg to give players a small head start if they want. Now whenever I click, I'm getting 2 taps, so we know that the pet multipliers are working. Next we gotta save up 1000 taps to unlock the ice world, so let's afk for a few minutes. Alright, the portal seems to be working fine, but I might have forgotten to anchor the ground part or something because it disappeared. We also obviously needed to add rebirths into this game, and those seem to be working perfectly. It looks like the shop needs some work right now, but we'll get to that towards the end of the 24 hours. It seems like Qubit's been doing a pretty good job of scripting. I've been working a lot on this game for the past few hours, so I'm gonna take a break for a bit while Qubit continues to polish the game on the scripting side. One hour later. Alright, I'm back from my break, and after after seeing this map, man, I know it looks good, but it's just too simple for me. I know that we took the time to change the whole map because I wanted to do the straight paths, but I think I'm going to switch back to the curves paths. I'm going to be more intentional with the path placement this time though, so that it doesn't feel as random. First off, I'm going to change the center circle so that the middle of it is hollow. This will make it fit better with the paths. Now I'm going to use the same Archidemies plugin that we used earlier in the video to make a bunch of paths branch out, but I'm going to keep all the paths at the same angle and I won't be switching the direction that the path travels. See, I think this looks pretty clean while being more interesting than the basic straight paths. Also, because everything is to the same angle, it's easy to add another layer under the path and scale everything at once. With the paths in place, I had to reposition some of the points of interest to line up right with the new path. I also started adding some smaller details in the terrain of the map to help bring everything together. Through this project, I feel like I really started to get better at filling up the open space without it feeling forced or cramped. Alright, so I finished the pads and added some more models around the map to help bring everything together. Now I'm going to start replacing some of the models because, not going to lie, some of them look like low quality free models. First up, these portal models gotta go. I replaced the portal models with a model from an old project and I think they fit well with the map because they're pretty simple and can be customized easily to fit the theme of the world you're traveling to. Speaking of other worlds, I previously made a couple quick islands for the different worlds, but since we're starting to get close to the end of this project, I think it's time to give them more attention. And by more attention, I meant 15 minutes of recoloring everything and making sure the models actually fit the theme of the world. As I've been working on this game, I've been posting pictures of the map and Discord servers such as Row Builders for some feedback and people are saying that the map feels a little too open. I honestly like the open map with a bunch of models in the background by the walls, but I took some of these flower models from the Pet Islands map and I'm just spamming them around a bit to fill up some of the open space. It also never hurts to add in some more of these rock pads. I think they fit 
hidden naturally and really makes it feel less empty. Alright, we've currently got about 5 hours left. The map is in a pretty good place right now and I'm kind of scared to make any more big changes to it because I don't want to ruin the look that it has right now. So I think it's time to start helping Qubit with the gameplay. Since Qubit is focusing on that scripting aspect of stuff, I don't want to mess it up so I thought I'd set up all the eggs and focus on balancing the game in terms of pet stats. So I'm gonna go do that right now. This is gonna be really boring for me but you guys get to watch it sped up so it's not that bad. While playtesting I got a bit carried away and ended up grinding the game for longer than I needed to because the gameplay is so simple and fun. In this game we're gonna have two super rare pets from the ice egg and the volcano egg that are both insanely overpowered compared to the other pets. With all of the pets imported and balanced it was time to move on to the last big step of the project. Game passes. The simulator pack makes it really easy to modify the game passes because you just give the name and the game pass ID and it takes care of the rest. Qubit and I came up with a long list of game passes so I'm gonna go into our favorite off-brand photoshop called Photopea to make some of these icons. I'm hoping this only takes around half an hour but we'll see. I came up with this cool hexagon theme for the pass icons and now I'm just inserting vectors for whatever the game pass is about. Alright it's been around 40 minutes and I've finished all the game pass IDs and I'm now just giving them all brief descriptions that will be shown in the shop. Now with everything in place if we test we should see all the game passes in the shop. I love how easy it is to customize everything because the scripting takes care of all the hard stuff. Thanks Qubit. Now I'm adding in a bunch of developer products because game passes aren't going to make us enough money on their own. If you don't know what the difference is between a game pass and a developer product, a game pass is a one-time purchase that gives you a permanent boost, while a developer product can be purchased an infinite amount of times, meaning infinite money for me. Hello. I like money. To make these icons, I took another trip to Photopea, and this didn't take nearly as long because I already had most of the images I needed, and I kept the background the same color for all of the dev products. I'm really happy with how all of these icons turned out, and I think I'm going to use this hexagon style more often because it gives the game a unique aspect, seeing how most games just have that circle game pass icon. And obviously, now when we play the game, all of the dev products are shown in the shop. At this point, the game is pretty much complete, so I'm just playing the game like a normal player while trying to find bugs that may annoy players. I also gave Qubit a bunch of small detail suggestions, such as being able to double click on a pet to equip it. One of the big things I had to mess around with was trading, since it's pretty easy for bugs to occur with that, and we don't want any people exploiting the game, but I felt like it was working pretty well. Another detail that I suggested was an animation for the player teleport, because it felt pretty low quality before. And with that out of the way, the game was finished. I reached out to somebody to help make a new game icon, and this is what they cooked up. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, but let me know what you guys think. As you are watching this video, the game is published for you guys to play, so go ahead and check the link in the description to check it out. I'll have a video out in a few weeks showing how the game performs. Also, if you guys are interested in purchasing a copy of this game, I will also have a link in the description where you can download a file. I'm honestly really impressed with what we were able to make, and I hope you guys enjoy grinding this game while you wait for me to release Pet Islands. If you watched all the way through this video, thank you for watching. If you've noticed my voice slowly die throughout this video, that's because I'm dying to a common cold, so wish me the best of luck getting out of this one. Let me know if you guys enjoy a longer video format like this, where I can go more in depth on everything, or if I should keep the videos quick in that 6-8 to eight minute range. Also, be sure to join the Discord server for big leaks on pet islands, and subscribe if you're new so we can hit that 25k sub goal by 2024. That's all for me, and I'll see you all hopefully in less than a month.